Alright, so to be honest, I wasn't really sure how I wanted to review this episode from My Hero Academia, but I want to make it very clear to begin with that I actually really like this episode. I really like this episode because most of it is fighting, and you know, for some people, you know, maybe they don't want that, but with a shonen anime, what are you really going to expect? There's going to be fighting anyways, but with a fight like this, it kind of means a lot more, especially in terms of the context with the episode, with actually what happens inside of the episode after the opening, and because the beginning of the episode starts with the continuation of what happened at the end of last week's episode, right? And then the episode finally, you know, starts. We get our title, and then we actually start getting into the fighting. And the fighting, for the most part, looked really good and was pretty interesting. Now, I say for the most part because there were a couple of, like, frames of animation where it looked off, but those are, like, in-between frames where they're not meant to look good, like, for the most part. So it's, I can't, so I can't really fault that for for, for, for like any particular reason because it's not meant to look good and only like the main shots that you see of characters only those really like look the best from, from what I can tell or from my lack of knowledge of animation really so the fight begins obviously and Midoriya is not trying to you know fight with Bakugo. Bakugo was the one who wanted to fight anyways. Deku obviously is just trying to you know is trying to protect himself in self-defense and then a whole bunch of explosions caused because Bakugo, right? So, <laughs> Eraserhead, Aizawa, is then informed that he has to go and stop the fucking fight and scold these motherfuckers, right? Someone is there and he stops them, right? Later in the episode, we find out that it's actually All Might. Um, but for the most part, you know, before he actually shows up, it actually takes him a while for him to show up, like after, like, the second half, or into the second half of the episode, but the fighting continues, there's a whole bunch of flashbacks, but there's a lot of strong, like, really good character moments for Bakugo, and we, when we finally get to see, like, more into his character and how he's feeling, you know, you know, obviously we know that, you know, he was really annoyed with, with Deku because he was always following behind Bakugo, and he was, like, stuck, like, and he was, like, stuck, like, with him and stuff, so, no matter, like, how many times he tried to, like, get rid of him, no matter how much of a, you know, of a loser Deku seemed to look like as, as a kid, you know, back when they were younger, because they've known each other forever at, at this point, you know, why all of a sudden has it, why has it all of a sudden just turned into Deku becoming one of the strongest people he might know, and why was he acknowledged by the number one hero that the both of them have acknowledged the most? And he has a couple more flashbacks, and then it gets to the point in the episode where Bakugo starts, you know, explaining his thought process during, like, the whole All for One and All Might fight. And he's starting to seem... He seems to start blaming himself for what happened. You know, he says that he wasn't strong enough. He says that he's weak, and, you know, he continues to say that throughout the whole process of the episode, even after All Might shows up. And, you know, he, he, he blames himself for what happened with All Might, for him being put in early retirement. And then, of course, you know, he ends up finding out later on that, of course, it was going to happen regardless, sooner or later, but it just it just so happened to happen sooner. But it wasn't Bakugo's fault. It, everything just kind of happened the way it did. So he really shouldn't be blaming himself, but he's doing that anyways. The episode continues on. There's a lot of other, like, more character moments that's really, really good. A lot more really good-looking fighting, of course. Uh, obviously, the two of them are starting to, like, figure each other out. And then eventually it gets to a point where Deku wants to start going more all-out, and he starts getting stronger. And then sooner or later, as we all know, Deku can use 5% of uh, One for All and Full Cowling. But now he was able to shoot that up to 8%, as they say in the episode. He shot up from 5% to 8%. And he even says that in uh, in the episode and in the same scene that, you know, from 5 to 8% isn't really that much of a, of a significant difference. But in this situation, it actually was because 
a little bit more, you know, continuous fighting or whatever, and not a lot of, uh, like, other stuff happens. It's just kind of, like, monologue inside of his head. But then he goes ahead and explains that just because he, you know, started using his legs more doesn't mean he can't use his arms. So he actually, Daku throws, like, a huge, like, left hook into Bakugo's face, and then Bakugo actually does this maneuver kind of thing where he, like, grabs Deku's face and then starts using his, his explosion quirk to shoot himself. He propels himself downwards to the ground and, you know, Deku loses. Bakugo actually won. And a couple other stuff happens. Uh, all Might finally shows up. He starts explaining, like, like the whole, like, one for all, like, being pressed down and how he became the number one hero in the symbol piece. Yada, yada, yada. That happens. And then the episode ends with the three of them going back into their dorms. Or rather, Bakugo and Deku, they go back to their dorms. They get scolded by Izawa. They're put into fucking house arrest, which I thought was fucking hilarious for some reason. Uh, they're put into house arrest. And then the episode after the credits actually shows the reaction of all of the students uh, inside of the dorms. They're surprised to hear that they actually fought in the middle of the night as they were all sleeping. And how they got put under house arrest. And just before we actually get into the previews, um, Bakugo actually gives Deku a little bit of, you know, pointers about what he noticed about Deku's shoot style, one for all shoot style, saying that the preparations for his moons were too big, and that's why Bakugo was able to react to some of his moves as quickly as he did. But other than that, you know, there's not really a whole lot for me to talk about because a lot of, like, the really like good character moments kind of happen in between like the fighting scenes and i don't really i didn't really know how to review this episode to begin with but in short the fighting scenes were good there were a lot of good character moments which i feel like you should go and watch and you know see for yourself and we're gonna get into what's gonna happen next week with a whole bunch of villains kind of doing whatever they're doing uh the next semester for the you know our main cast is you know starting next week so Let's go ahead and wait and see. A couple of new characters are going to be introduced next week, most likely. And I know some of these characters and, like, their existence because of certain videos on YouTube. So, eh, whatever. It's not really that big of a deal. I didn't really know how to review this episode to begin with. And I'm kind of all over the place to begin with. But if you enjoyed regardless, be sure to leave a like. And if you are new, subscribe for more videos just like this. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a fantastic day. I'm out. Peace.